Hello, hello, and good afternoon, everybody. Oh my gosh, it's been a while since I've been here. I've uh, been traveling a ton for business, which is good. It means business is good. been going on tour to uh, several different markets, and uh, oh, what a whirlwind, but I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to be here today, and if you guys are wondering, I'm, I think most of you guys know, but uh, it's uh, I'm Catholic. This is this the mark. Um, of Ash Wednesday, the start of our Lent season. So uh, anyway, I apologize if it's distracting, um, but the guy, I mean, the priest really, he really must have thought I needed it today because, man, he layered it on thick. But anyway, today we're going to talk about episode 55, and today I'm going to talk about how and why I built local first. And um, if you guys have not done so, please subscribe to youtube.com forward slash create wealth with Tara so you get alerted every time I um, upload an episode. And um, again, I'm going to be putting out another 100 and probably 80 episodes this year. There are already 54. This is number 55. So please uh, feel free to share this free MLM training with your teams. So um, I guess I'll start with the, with the, the why. Why did I start building local first? Well, the why was because I was a working full-time, 40 hours a week mom with two small kids. Uh, literally the day I joined, my daughter was 11 months. My son was uh, seven. So you can see that I didn't really have a lot of time on my hands and I didn't really have a choice, right? I, uh, going out of town and, you know, um, you know, traveling to the different markets wasn't really an option at that time. You know, every day was scrambling to get home and get food on the table and get my kids their bath time, bedtime, homework time and in bed. And so, um, I didn't dawn on me to not build local. So I, there was, I found somebody in my upline that was probably, 25 to 30 minutes away from me and I went to her house every single week for six weeks and I sat in the very front row right um I wasn't sitting in the back texting I wasn't chatting I wasn't standing you know in the back eating grapes and drinking water I was literally sitting in the front row taking notes and the reason why is because it dawned on me very early that the woman making the most money was the woman standing at the front of the room. So I thought, okay, well, I better get to the front of the room as soon as possible. So I would bring people every single uh, meeting, every meeting, whether it was one, I think one time I brought six people, but I was there to learn, right? This is a, an industry that's all about duplication, right? It's not what works, it's what duplicates. And I figured, well, if she's got a story, that she's telling and people are signing up based on that story, well then I have to tell that story and if I tell that story, people will sign up with me. And that's what it was. So we, we had a little video, I'm sure everyone has a video or a tool. She told her story, she played the video and then she talked and she told the the story of the company. She told the income story of the company. She talked about, you know, how to make money. So that I know you guys, uh, I think it's just a couple episodes I go to, I did one on the one thing, right? The one thing is, the person who wins, the person who makes the most money, makes uh, is the person who tells the company story, the income story, and their own story as much as possible, right? You are getting paid to tell your company story, right? Why are your products in existence? Why are your services in existence? Why is your income opportunity a great opportunity? How can someone make money, right? And to those people, like if you want to know what my secret to success was, was I literally carried around a DVD and a whiteboard. And I went after, you know, and, and these notes, and these notes were rolled up. Man, they were, after nine months, they were tattered, they were falling apart, and they were handwritten. I don't even think I went to the trouble of typing it. Maybe I did, I don't know. But I, I had them in a scroll. And eventually, over time, after months and months of getting into living rooms, I memorized what they were on, but I would still hold them, and just in case I forgot something. It was kind of a mental crutch. So um, a couple of things is, number one, the reason why I started building local is because I had no choice. Um, and how I built local was just finding people in my area via the whole question, who do you know who? Who do you know who wants to, you know, whatever your product is? Who do you know who wants to make money? Who do you want, know that wants to lose weight? Who do you know that wants to save money on their cell phone bill? Who do you want, who do you know that likes makeup? Who do you know that likes jewelry? I mean, whatever your product or service is, who do you know who, you know, likes oils? Who do you know that likes holistic? Who do you know that works out? Who do you know that's tired? Who do you know that, whatever, you should know who your customer is. And asking that question over and over again, I started finding people who you know thought the way I thought. 
I, I started attracting people who were, you know, for example, I've always been in health and wellness. I've never made a secret about that. And uh, it's all over my Facebook, so it's not like I can hide it. But I was attracting people who were interested in health and wellness. I was attracting people who wanted to help other people. I was attracting people who are entrepreneurs, right? By asking, who do you know who? So um, that's how I did it. And I would just get into a living room and then I would sign people up and I would turn to someone that, and even if they were just customers, whether they're customers or they wanted to sell the product and I said, okay, who's next? Like who, whose living room is next? Who wants to share this with their friends and family? And I literally, not figuratively, I literally was in homes every single week from the time I made that commitment, which was probably a couple months in, for 15 months consecutively without missing a single week. I don't even think I missed Christmas, the, the week between Christmas and New Year's. I'm pretty sure that I was even doing presentations then. And so um, there's some things that I've learned uh, over and over again that why does, why does it work? Why would you even have home parties? When I know that today with the day and age of social media, it's so tempting to just hide yourself and, and advertise work from your pajamas. It's so tempting to do that, guys. But I just spent the last couple weeks in, in Washington and then in, in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I've been in you know four or five living rooms. And I'm telling you, there's something to the magic of building local, right? You're, you're building community. You're, yeah, I'm ashes for Ash Wednesday. You're building community. You're building trust. I mean, think about this. Network marketing is hard enough. And all of a sudden, if your sponsor lives across the country, it doesn't mean you can't have success, but how great is it if they lived across town and they could be there when you filled your living room? Like tonight, like I'm in California, tonight at four o'clock my time, seven o'clock um, Florida time, I'm going to be Zooming in, like Skype, if you guys know what Zoom is, Zoom is the greatest technology since sliced bread. I'm gonna be Zooming into a living room full of guests, to share my story and to share the company's story after they share their story and play a video, right? So the great news is, is social media has made it easy. Technology, like we didn't have Zoom. I don't think we even had Skype back in 2007. If we did, I don't know. I, I didn't know about it. Um, I didn't even have Facebook in 2007. I think it existed. I just wasn't on it until I think 2008. So I built my business because I didn't have social media. I used emails to convey information, to remind people of events, to remind people, to send, if someone said, send me information. You know, I don't even think we used, to, we used text back then because believe it or not, I don't think 10 years ago, we didn't have smartphones. I know, right? 10 years ago. And in, uh, in fact, in two weeks from today is my 10 year anniversary. Oh my gosh, that is going to be fun. We're going to do, I'm going to do a, a big lunch and learn celebrating my 10 year anniversary, probably telling the stories, probably, you know, recapping some of the fun stuff that's happened, some of the, the milestones we've hit, um, the countries I've been in. So that'll be a fun one. So make sure you check back on March 15th. But today's March 1st, by the way, for those of you who are Catholic, you know that because uh, March 1st is Ash Wednesday. So um, anyway, so Bottom line was I went and I learned and I, I got that information by sitting there watching somebody else and I took notes and I took notes and I took notes and then after I took notes I found someone that would put me in their living room and I took those notes, notes and I did what she did and guess what? I had the results that she had. I started signing people up. And then I started signing distributors and then they started inviting me into their living room and then I would go into their living room and we signed more people up and two became four, became eight, became 16, became 32, became 64. And within 13 months from the very first day, I started my very first network marketing building a hundred percent offline, 100 percent offline. No social media. It didn't exist back then for me. 100, I think MySpace was there. Facebook probably existed. Um, I don't think there was Twitter. I don't think there was Instagram. Definitely wasn't things like WhatsApp. There wasn't Google+. Plus. Probably Facebook. I'm always a little bit late to the game. But 100% belly to belly. Who do you know who? And you know what? It was, it was nice because we were getting into living rooms of people's friends and family, their networks. And they were filling their living rooms with people and we had fun. Now some people 
you know, some people went all out. My, my, <laughs> like if you've ever been to a Filipino meetings, I love my Filipinos. They're always putting out the most incredible spreads of food. You know, it's a four hour long meeting. They really spend time to get to know each other and it's a great culture. And then they've got my, my moms, my socialites that were putting out spreads of cheese and grapes and wines. And then I've got some people that were really just like all business, put out bottled water, pens and papers. Like, let's just go, right? So it doesn't matter who or what or how. It was a matter that we were just getting in front of people and building relationships and uh, you know sharing the vision, sharing stories. And there's something magical about online, I mean offline building. There's something magical about belly to belly. It's still my favorite. That's why I flew you know, across the country for two days last week. And I flew up north for two days the week prior to that. And then I'll continue flying to my markets because there's something magical about getting to know people. And, and of course, um, I always look forward to our global conventions, our regional you know, conventions because I love being around people. So the bottom line is most people are doing this business part time. And the easiest thing you can do part time is go to meetings, one on ones and, you know, things in your local area. You know, I mean, it's funny. People are like, when are we opening Timbuktu country? Like, um, I don't know. We're still not really fully launched in California yet. Like I have 39 million people in California. There's not a single network marketing company on the face of the earth that has 39 million people in it. So guess what? Everybody in California doesn't even know about your yours or my product. So why don't we open California together, right? People are like, when are we opening this little country off this this island and it's got four million people? When are we opening Arizona? When are we opening Florida? When are you guys going to launch Texas? Like, if you don't have, like, when are you going to launch the town next to you? Like, I have 76,000 people in the town next to me. And guess how many people I have in it? Maybe five. You know, I have 46,000 people in my town. Guess how many I have? I think I have, like, 10 distributors, 12 distributors, and maybe, like, 150 customers in my own town. Right? So... Uh, you know, when you're starting out, most people are doing this part time. Usually people are doing this around a busy schedule because if you had an empty schedule, you probably already found something to fill it, right? So most people, when they get into network marketing, their plate is already full and you have kids or you have a job or you have two jobs or you have a church or you have someone to take care of or, you know, whatever it is, it's like most people don't sit there and have spare time constantly. So we have to teach people how to do this. And I have a great lunch and learn that's one of my earlier episodes on how to build this um, in seven to eight hours a week. You know, how to build this around a busy schedule. And that's a great one. Um, another thing is you're going to save money, right? Most people, you know, it may be take you a, a month to get to $500 a month. It may take you six months. It may take you a year to get to a $500 a month residual income. Don't ever try to live off your network marketing income until you have enough to pay all of your bills your rent, your food, your cable, like everything that you pay right now. Let's say that your entire monthly nut to crack in your house is 8,000 a month. Do not quit your day job until you are making the $8,000 a month plus a couple thousand dollars more a year to go to events and tickets to travel, your auto ships, your orders, whatever you need. I would say an extra, you know, budget an extra four or $500 a month for all of that. And then um, I even, I didn't even quit my job till I was making, um, I, I quit my job when I replaced my six figure income. I didn't let my husband quit his job while I was not a fan of it. I didn't approve it until I was making $80,000 a month and we had one half a million dollars invested in investments. That's how conservative I was. Why? Because I just don't, this industry is sometimes very, uh, you know, it's like the stock market, real estate, network marketing can be up and down too, right? So we were very conservative in our approach and it's been great because I've never made any decisions based on scarcity or fear. I've made them with my intellect of what I want and you know, why, I'm, why I'm here doing what I want to do. So bottom line is build local. You have your family, you have your kids, anyone can get out for two or three nights a week for an hour or two. Anyone can build local, anyone can meet someone for a one-on-one, -on -one, meet them with a coffee, sit down with them, create a relationship with them, give them your word that I'm gonna give you this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you build this dream that I'm selling you. Now I'm not gonna do it for you, 
But here I am selling you this dream. And, you know, and, and when you build locally, all of a sudden you have like a team. Then there's like you and your upline and you and your upline's upline. And all of a sudden at a, at a meeting or a party or whatever you want to call it, you got to have like a whole little tribe of reinforcements. And that can really help a new person. Because bottom line, guys, is most people aren't entrepreneurial and they're scared to get into business. They're scared to get into business, so you can create kind of like a little local tribe where you all um, you all work together, and maybe one person forgets something, but the other one remembers, and one person can use their house, and the other person will bring the whiteboard, and the other one will bring the water, and you guys can create a community where you um, are attracting the right people, right? Um, because people will, will do as you do. There's also a lot of psychology and groups uh, selling. When, uh, when you do things online, everyone hears a presentation and hangs up, well, who bought? Does anybody else know who else bought? So when you're sitting in a living room and there's 20 people there and someone's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing and picks up an application and starts signing up, gets out their credit card, that gives kind of like an unwritten permission, like an unverbal permission to everyone else in the room is, this is okay. And usually there's a bandwagon effect, especially if your you know, presentation is really good, that people will start signing up and they'll sign up. And so that you don't get that online. And so there's a lot of great things. And this is there. we have amazing trainings on how to build online and how to build through social media and everything. But for me, like my passion is really just helping people and, and sitting there and, and walking arms with somebody. Of course, I can... I have a global team. We have teams in seven different countries right now on three different continents, and I feel blessed beyond belief, but there's something about local. So if you're just getting started in network marketing, you know, can you block out two nights a week to get into people's homes, whether it's for a one-on-one -on -one or they can put four people or 10 people in the living room. And if your upline doesn't live near you, have them come in through the computer, via Skype, via FaceTime. Uh, I use Zoom it's, and, and have them share their story. And I always give my local um, markets a, a target like, hey, if you guys do this amount, I'll come out. And then you have to do this amount the next time that I'll come out. And we like to run contests and stuff. And it's fun because I really really want the local leaders to eventually, you know, take the reins and, um, you know, uh, help the process. So build locally because it's a less expensive, it takes less time, it's less of a commitment, and you should be surrounded by a support team. And there is a psychology group setting, you can create a tribe, you can create community, and everyone, you know, can be there. And, and I'll tell you, some weeks I went to the meeting just because I was feeling um, deflated, maybe I, maybe I got a few rejections that week. So sometimes you go to the meeting, the meeting needs you. Sometimes you go to the meeting and you need the meeting. And so it's really good to always have something local going on aside with your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Snapchat, that chat, lip chat, wrap chat. I mean, there's so many things now. I don't even know. I should help. I should ask my 17 year old to give me a list of the, the current social medias, but I only use a few of them. So I hope that's helpful. Um, but start locally, invest in your business. And then when you can afford to travel to your markets, when you see something happening in a market and you see someone taking control, either have you or your upline go out to that market and pour some gasoline on the fire. So hopefully this was helpful, and uh, thank you guys. It's been a while. I'm glad to be back. Tomorrow, I'm heading to um, Las Vegas to do the Eric Worre Women's Leadership event. Now, I am sure I'm going to get some ridiculously amazing content, so give me a love button if you want me to be doing some Facebook Lives with fresh content hot off the press from some of the most powerful women in network marketing who have done billion dollars, multi-billions of dollars, have made 30, 40, 50 million dollars. Let me know if you guys want to hear that, and I look forward to seeing many of my favorite people around the industry this weekend in Las Vegas for Eric Worre, the most powerful women in network marketing event. So thank you guys, and I will see you shortly for episode 56. And again, don't forget to subscribe, youtube.com forward slash create wealth with Tara, or just go to YouTube and search Tara Wilson Lunch and Learn, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks again, guys, and for all my Catholics, happy Lent. Bye, guys.